Hello my friends, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Today's tutorial is a kind of forest painting inspired by Javid watercolor. Um, I don't know how this is going to turn out because it looks simple and complicated at the same time. Regardless, we will try it out. So I am taking, I have no room on my palette here for color <coughs> color mixing but I'm taking a gray and there was already some green there so <laughs> this would have green mixed in but I am uh, painting this on my piece of paper which is in uh, landscape position so just painting that over like this and the base we want to make uh, quite green. So I have a lot of different greens to choose from here. So I'm going to use a variety of greens to create this base bushiness, as I'd like to call it. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry, I just ate something and it's stuck in my throat. Um, yeah, so I'm just using a bunch of different greens here to create, like, a, I want the forest foreground to be this very dense bush, um, bush-like situation. So that's what I'm trying to create here. Um, I'll even pop some green at the top here, or some overhanging branches and whatnot. I really don't like how my paper does this spidery stringy effect. Um, I don't know if it's because I have too much water on my on my piece of paper. I just tap my brush a few times to sprinkle some green on there. I'm gonna pick up some black watercolor and plop that down in some areas to create, uh, I guess, depth. Make it look like there's different layers of watercolored, sorry, of um, bush and whatnot. So I'm just layering that on. Now, while that is drying or doing its thing, um, I'm going to paint on some subtle trees in the background as well. So I'm using gray and these trees are just going to grow out like this, although nothing is painting on. I'm not sure why. Boop. That is not gray. That is green. Hmm. I wanted this to be quite dense with, uh, like, very thin trees. I think I overdid it with my foreground. Many years ago, I painted this forest painting that is actually still on my, is on my channel, it was a tutorial. And I surprised myself with how it turned out, like the level of detail on that thing. Uh, it's, it's a, if I do say so myself, it was a quite a nice painting. And um, this is sort of reminding me of the beginnings of it. So I'm just painting a bunch of vertical lines because I wanted to make it look like there's trees growing in the background, but I made this foreground way too high. It should have only come up like maybe a third. So up to here, maybe. Um, but what are you going to do? Everything kind of spread out and took over. Um, I'm going to 
make tr some more trees progressively darker. Why don't we actually let this dry and then I'll put on some darker trees. So that should be dry, I'm hoping. I'm, I've taken a thinner brush and I'm going to paint on some thin trees. And these trees may or may not have branches. And we can make our trees darker by adding black or I've taken like this bluish gray that I have. I'm going to use that color a little bit. I just had a whole internal dialogue in my head before I zoned back in to <laughs> this painting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to strike a balance between not chatting about random things because that has been expressed to me. Like both, you either love it or you hate it. And um, I've had both opinions expressed to me through comments on my videos. I'm trying to make everybody happy while keeping myself sane. Uh, but there are moments like this where I'm doing the same step over and over again. There's only so many times I can say paint a vertical line. Um, and it's during times like this that I would really like to chat about random things happening and going on and whatnot. Uh, because there's really nothing else to talk about and it'll just be silence otherwise. So <sighs> but then I'm like, what do I talk about? Because there are a few things. No, there's one. No, there's two things in particular going on in our lives at the moment that are like, a, it's not that, I, ju I just would rather not talk about them on the internet. Uh, and I cannot help but be consumed. My thoughts are consumed by these things. So I'm trying to stay present in this tutorial, but at the same time, I'm just thinking about thinking about how things will resolve themselves and it's tricky but that is life I remember before our daughter was born I remember saying to Chris or my husband and he agreed with me saying like our lives have been generally very easy like it feels like things are just handed to us. Not saying we don't work hard. We obviously put in the effort and work hard for what we want, but it feels very much like life has been quite fruitful for us. And so before my daughter was born, I was like, oh my gosh, like what is coming for us? What is 
there's no way that we can have this much luck and have things just go our way for this many years. Um, and lately it has felt like that wrath has come down and we are now getting that. We're getting life handed to us. Uh, So, this really reminds me of that painting I was talking about. You guys should look back in my tutorials and see if you can identify which one I was talking about. But it really, really looks like it. Um, I really like it. I am very happy with it. I'm trying to pick up gray that's very light so I can paint, um, like, horizontal branches kind of going across in the background that are very faint to the eye that are not easy to see to make the background look more cluttered and filled with branches and growth and things growing everywhere um I'm going to have <clears throat> this random bush growing here. <sighs> anyway, we all experience tough, you know, seasons in our lives and um, I think that if you saw other people's problems you'd reach back in and grab your own and this has I've been reminded of this over and over again where I'm talking to somebody about the things that we're going through and and then later on we're talking about something someone else who's going through like 100 times worse like not even comparable and then I feel bad for even complaining about things. But I know I'm being super vague. I think I need to apply <clears throat> some more. I think I'm done with the trees. I might be done with the trees. I think it's a good idea to add some like green foliage so I'm just trying to use like some sort of dotting technique here So those earlier areas where we put green, that's kind of where I want to cluster these green leaves. Sorry, that's where I want to cluster these green leaves. So I've just angled my liner brush horizontally and I'm kind of dotting the surface and it's creating exactly the texture that I'm looking for, which I'm happy about. Uh, and you can go in and add different, uh, like, I'm going to add a little bit of black to darken certain areas. And that should mix with the green and create a nice uh, layer of contrast. This area, I believe, needs more to it. Unfortunately, I have to go over it again. So, that's what I'm doing now. Going over it again. And this time I'll keep it a lot lower, if you know what I mean. 
Like I won't go all the way halfway up. I'll try to keep it more in the bottom fourth even, bottom third area. I kind of want to hide where these stumps start and end. So right now I'm just adding black in random areas to create contrast and value. I don't even know if I'm using the right terminology. So if something I'm saying doesn't make sense, it's probably because I don't know what I'm saying. It sounds right though, so correct me if I'm wrong. As I often am, my friends. Now, I'm going to try and extend this bush line with just leaves for a nice fade out. Painting little leaves on this little bush thing that I painted. So this is one of those tutorials that there isn't very much content because it's very repetitive and kind of intuitive. So like I'm just painting, I'm dotting leaves, I'm adding value, I'm painting vertical lines. So there isn't really too much extra to what I'm saying. Uh, it's easier if you just watch what I'm doing and, you know, add your own touch or just follow exactly along with what I'm doing. So I want this part to dry a teeny bit so I can add more detail on top of it. I kind of wish I, well, I still can. I'm gonna extend this on the right a little bit higher. Hopefully I still can. And maybe on this side too. Just so it doesn't look like flat the whole way across. That looks a little bit better, I think. Um, and yeah, I'm going to add more over here once this dries a little bit. I wish there was, I could add more, like I want more going on, but I don't want to plague the surface with all these lines and details. And then sometimes when you put too much, uh, it makes it look worse. And I do that quite often, actually. And I say this in some tutorials because I had someone... It wasn't the nicest comment. It was a little mean, but um, in their comment they wrote, know when to stop. And uh, I've, I've mentioned this in a few tutorials, so this might be repetitive for people that watch all of my tutorials but that quote it has lived on in my head since I read it and every time I feel like oh I should add this oh there's one more thing I want to add I just think of that quote that quote just kind of resonates in my head and I laugh inside and then I repeat it to myself because you know what sometimes I don't know when to stop 
it's too tempting to try and either fix things or add extra things that that you think are going to improve the painting but then you know it ends up looking way worse because because you just I don't know when to stop so thank you to that person I know that you were probably just having a bad day when you wrote that entire comment but it has brought me joy <laughs> or entertainment at least um so I'm gonna pick up like a lime green here and I can add because my uh, watercolor is so opaque I can paint a lighter color on top of black which is so handy because usually you can only do that you can't do that with watercolor it's usually gouache and further up from that whatever that whether it's acrylic paint or oils or whatever but this stuff is amazing. I am so happy with it. And I know a lot of people will disagree with me. But I haven't used that many paints in my watercolor career. So I'm very happy with these ones. And they're very budget friendly. I don't think you need all these expensive things. I, I know how it feels to get trapped in that loop. Like you want to have all the latest gadget stuff and it because it makes you feel like you're... A, a perfect example of that is um, I, I watch this person on YouTube. I'm sure you've... Many of you have watched her videos called Ballerina Farm. I love... Like her lifestyle is the aesthetic that is so visually appealing to me and uh when i watch her make sourdough i'm like oh yeah if i had a cast iron this like my cooking would be elevated <laughs> even though it wouldn't like whether you cook in a cast iron pan or you cook in a steel pan it's probably going to taste the same the cast iron is just way higher maintenance and will rust very easily and you know you guys know what I'm talking about so that's what I'm trying to refer it to I'm trying to relate that feeling to like having the the same professional quality paintbrushes that your your favorite youtuber has or paints or whatnot but I just use like much more affordable uh options and they are quite swell for me. I think I'm gonna stop there. This is when, this is me knowing when to stop. I think I'm happy with this. I dabbed the heck out of this painting with fake leaves. So I'm just gonna take off my little border here. Of course, when I'm done painting for the week, this comes off in one beautiful square where I could reuse it. But anyways, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please let me know what you think in the comments. What would you have done differently? Um, uh, yeah, hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.